preamble to the Constitution of India. Any of you remember the preamble? Hmm? Who can recite preamble to me? We all have been taught while growing up that there is some mantra or some powerhouse which we must recite in our morning prayers. Some recite Gayatri mantra, some recite some other Hanumanji ka mantra or Ganesh ji ka mantra. According to me, what Sahil recited is the modern day mantra of modern India. And I hope what Sahil recited understands as well. Because the power behind that mantra is immense. Having read multiple constitutions of the world, in my humble opinion, the constitution of India is a legislative masterpiece. A beautiful piece of legislation. The lengthiest written constitution of the world. But the interesting factor is its quality of flexibility. The feature which you won't find anywhere else is the adaptability which the constitution of India has. As Sahil rightly said that the Constituent Assembly passed the Constitution of India on 26 November 1949 and was enforced on 26 January 1950. So from the date of enforcement we are now 68 years and you know how many times the Constitution of India has been amended? Any idea? 101 amendment acts. And what's your name? Clap for three. Good. Great. Please take one more Guru Mantra from me. If you want to admire somebody, admire wholeheartedly. If you want to abuse somebody, feel hesitant. <laughs> Don't hesitate while admiring. If Deep is giving a good answer, admire. <coughs> One gets encouraged. Now, there are 101 amendment acts, but there are 123 amendment bills which were presented for the amending of the Constitution of India. So 68 years, 101 amendments. We have already crossed centuries. In cricketing terms, century in 68 balls. And to put it in perspective, the Constitution of USA, which was promulgated in the year 1789, so which is almost 229 years old, has been amended how many times? Any idea? 27 times. In 229 years, 27 times, and we have amended 101 times in 68 years. So some may feel that probably it's lack of clarity on our parts that we need to amend so many times. But I see it from a different perspective. I take it as a quality of adaptability, of a feature to keep improving. If some flaw is found in my personality, I need to improve. Though it's a different story that my wife finds that there's only flaws in my personality. There's hardly any improvement. But I keep trying to impress her. Similarly, the Constitution of India is also trying to impress its citizens by amending, by improving. The provision in respect of the amendment to the Constitution of India 
is given in part 20 which is represented by a sole article article 368 now interestingly the amendment enabling article of 368 itself is amended twice once by 24th amendment and later by 42nd amendment so see our flexibility that the amendment enabling provision itself is amended and if you go by the statistics almost every prime minister barring few who had got very little term have amended the constitution to begin with but in Jawaharlal Nehru's era the amendment of the constitution happened 17 times Lal Bahadur Shastri amended thrice during Indira Gandhi's time she had two different uh, deferred terms in between she was out of power and in the first term she amended 21 times in the second time seven times it's in all 28 times she amended the constitution during her prime ministership which is the largest rajiv gandhi amended 10 times vishwanath pratap singh amended seven times moraji desai amended four times narsing rao amended 10 times satal bihari vajpayee amended 14 times Manmohan Singh amended six times and the current dispensation the present government and the Mr. Narendra Modi have already amended it thrice. Now, the interesting amendments which happen under Article 368, the procedure prescribed therein says that the constitution can be amended in two manners. First, by a special majority of total members of both the houses and the word used is and two-third majority of each house members present and voting. Prior to 24th amendment, there was one more type of method of amending that was simple majority, but that has been struck down. So the special majority. But then there are certain clauses, certain areas of the constitution of India, which cannot be amended even by the special majority because it requires the ratification by the states and states not less than 50% of the states of India and what are those areas which need ratification there are five areas which require in addition to the spatial majority not less than 50% of the states ratification to that amendment otherwise the amendment will fall through first area there are five articles Article 54, 55, 73, 162, and 241. These five articles cannot be amended by the parliament by special majority without ratification of more than 50% states of India. 54, 55 deals with the election of the president of India. 73 deals with the executive power of the parliament. 162 deals with the powers of the governors of the states and 241 deals with high courts. So if you want to amend something in respect of these areas, you need ratification by states. The second area, as I said, there are five areas which cannot be touched without ratification. The second area is chapter 4 of part 5, chapter 5 of part 6 and chapter 1 
of part 9 of the Constitution. These three chapters, if needs amendment, require ratification by states. The third area, in case if the parliament wants to do any amendment to the seventh schedule, which comprises three lists. What are the three lists? <laughs> Union list, state list, and concurrent list. Any of the lists that needs to be disturbed or amended, <coughs> changed, it requires ratification. The fourth area is in respect of the representation of states in the parliament. And the fifth area is Article 368 itself. If you need to amend the enabling amendment provision of 368, then you need ratification by not less than 50% states. So these are the five areas which can be amended by the second type of procedure. Rest all can be amended by spatial majority, which I expect. Now moving ahead, and if it is beyond the ambit of Article 13, then that amendment is ultra -wise. The parliament was disturbed. Because it was the first body blow to its powers, its supremacy. To overcome Golaknath's judgment, 24th Amendment to the Constitution of India was brought. By which subclause 4 was added to Article 13 and subclause 3 was added to Article 368. So what I said in the beginning that the amendment enabling provision of article 368 itself was amended by the 24th amendment by bringing and adding sub clause 3 which declared that any amendment done under article 368 shall not fall under the definition of law given under article 13. And Article 13 was added with subclause 4 saying that nothing brought through Article 368 shall fall under the definition of law. Hearing. This was 24th Amendment 1971 was challenged again before the Supreme Court. And then came the historical judgment by the lengthy, by the largest bench ever being constituted in Indian judicial history. The largest bench of Supreme Court was 13 judges bench, which passed the landmark judgment of Kesavananda Bharti versus State of Kerala, 1973 Supreme Court. Now, why this judgment is landmark? Because it introduced among all inter alia many changes. It brought a new feature to the constitution of India called basic structure and prohibited the parliament that the parliament cannot disturb the basic structure of the constitution. Although it held that the parliament has power to amend everything, anything, including fundamental rights. But among others, two outstanding features of this judgment was that more or less it upheld Golaknath to the extent that amendments brought under 368 shall be within the ambit of law under Article 13. So to, to that extent it confirmed Golan. But it went ahead and said but that does not mean that the parliament is prohibited altogether to amend fundamental rights. 
the parliament has the power to amend anything if it wishes provided it does not disturb the basic structure of the constitution